There you are, and a big welcome to everyone as you gathered here with the church at Zion Hill for praise and worship. Thank you for joining us this morning, wherever you are across this digital platform, in your homes, in your office, on your iPads, phones, or, or even television screens. We want to welcome you all. And please look down below. Please hit the subscribe button and subscribe to our channel. And then the notification bell, please hit that bell, and you'll be notified when worship services come Come online, and then also give us a thumbs up. That helps with our YouTube experience. And again, we are so glad you're here. We want you to feel at home because you are at home. And now let's start our worship this morning with a scripture reading and prayer from Isaiah chapter 62. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet until her righteousness goes forth as brightness and her salvation as a burning torch. The nations shall see your righteousness and all the kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken for your land shall no more be termed desolate. But you shall be called my delight in her and your land married. For the Lord delights in you and your land shall be married. For as, your, as young men marries a young woman, so shall your sons marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. On the walls of Jerusalem I have set watchmen all day and all night. They shall never be silent. You who put the Lord in remembrance, take no rest and give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem and makes it a praise in the earth. Let us pray together. Our gracious heavenly father, God, we thank you. We thank you for this day that you've given to us that we can reach across this digital platform and reach out to our brothers and sisters in Christ and to our guests this morning as we gather together for one reason and one purpose is exactly what Isaiah was talking about, that we can't keep silent. We won't be quiet until your righteousness shines throughout the land. We thank you, Father, for the blessings that you've given to us. You've poured into our lives and in the lives of our family, the lives of our church family, our friends and neighbors, because you've given us the greatest gift we ever needed, your son, Jesus Christ. He took my place on that cross. He took our place on that cross that this would be more than just a gathering. This would be more than just a television show, but this would be a time of praise and worship where the power of the Holy Spirit is so filled around us that it takes our breath away. Oh, Father God, we thank you. Jesus, we thank you. Holy Spirit, we thank you. And we reach out to each other and we reach up to you, expressing our love, expressing our adoration, expressing all that we are because of you and your love for us. Oh, Father God, we pray for our land that we live in. We pray for the United States of America, for Georgia, for Hall County, for Flyer Branch, Oakwood, Gainesville, all the areas around us. We pray that now there's a time of peace, that there's a time of calmness, a time where conversations can take place and real change can come about. A healing, Father. Heal our land. May our land no more be called forsaken, nor our land be termed desolate. But that once again, you can take delight in us and in your church across America. May Christians take heed to the signs of the times, making preparations and being ready. Ready, first of all, to share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ready to reach out and help someone up. Ready to look to that eastern sky for the return of your son, Jesus Christ. Oh, Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for your love for us. We, we pray that you'll be pleased with worship today. We pray the Holy Spirit will guide us and direct us. Fill us, Holy Spirit. Fill us with your power and your presence. Take up more room in my life this morning that as I worship, 
you will guide me to worship that is pleasing to God the Father and God the Son. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We love you, Father. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. And we pray all these things in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Say amen. Now let's continue our worship in praise and music. God bless you.
Okay, I hope you're ready after all of that praise and worship and music that you're ready to uh, receive the Word of God this morning and the proclamation of the Word. And if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Ephesians chapter 4 and John's Gospel chapter number 15. As we gather this morning, I want you to realize that we bless God because we have been blessed. We are loyal to God because God has been loyal to us. We wait upon the Lord because He waited on us. We give to God because He has given to us. We love because we have been loved. We forgive. Because we have been forgiven. And we sacrifice because He has sacrificed His only Son. If you're going to live the Christian life that is filled by the Holy Spirit, then you must remember to bless the Lord. Don't forget. Don't forget to bless the Lord. Remember to be loyal. Remember to wait upon the Lord. Remember to give to the Lord. Remember to sacrifice with passion. And this is what it means to live a Spirit-filled life. Now, the last few weeks, couple of weeks since uh, Pentecost Sunday, we've talked about the Holy Spirit. We talked about the promise of the Holy Spirit. We talked about the purpose of the Holy Spirit. And we talked about the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, this morning, I want us to look at how to live a life filled, filled with the Holy Spirit. Our goal this morning is is to share the Word in such a way that we will live with the desire to unwrap the gift of the Holy Spirit, to take take the wrapping off of that gift and, and to allow the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit within us. I had opportunity to read a story this week about D.L. Moody. You know D.L. Moody, Moody Bible Institute, evangelist, evangelist here in the United States and, and, and went, campaigned in England. Well, there was a campaign that he was going to give and in, in, in present in England and, and, and some of the local pastors got together and they were beginning to plan and get things ready. And there was an elderly pastor who said, Why do we need this Mr. Moody? He's uneducated, inexperienced. Who does he think he is anyway? Does he think he's got some kind of monopoly on the Holy Spirit? And a younger, wiser pastor responded, No, but the Holy Spirit has a monopoly on Mr. Moody. Think about that. Thank God. Thank God for the wonderful experience that we can have and can experience by the infilling of the Holy Spirit. 
It's a brand new life. It's a brand new identity. It's a brand new nature. And remember, the question is not how much of the Holy Spirit do I have? But instead, you should be asking how much of the Holy, does the Holy Spirit have of me? Not how much do I have of the Holy Spirit, but how much does the Holy Spirit have of me? If you want to experience the true Christian life, you must remember to be motivated, to be moved, to be guided and directed by the Holy Spirit. Listen, we cannot expect our walk with God to improve unless we learn how to improve our walk and our approach to the Holy Spirit. The moment that we ask Jesus Christ into our hearts, the moment that we ask Him to forgive us, He placed within us the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will always be in us. But in our Christian walk, we need to be motivated. We need to be moved by the Holy Spirit. Now this movement can lead to a deeper, closer walk with the Lord. And He expects us. As you read the Scriptures, and if we have looked over the last two weeks, the Lord Jesus Christ expects us to follow the lead of the Holy Spirit. And that's exactly what Paul writes to us in Ephesians chapter 4. Now, he first wrote it to the church at Ephesus, but he's re- he wrote it loudly and clearly for us today. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed... For the day of redemption. So first of all, if we're going to have this Christian filled life, filled with the Holy Spirit, we've got to realize as Christians we should be motivated by the Holy Spirit of God, not self-motivation. We need to be motivated by the Holy Spirit of God and not Self-motivation. Now, people are motivated by different things. For some, it's money. Money motivates people. Love motivates people. Fear motivates people. Or even a desire to accomplish some goal that a person has in their mind. Now, this is also true for the follower of Christ. Some people are motivated by fear. To follow Christ. They're afraid that if, if they don't do, don't do all the things right, that God will get them. You know, kind of like Santa Claus and the naughty list and the nice list. Now, others believe uh, doing Christian things will earn them points so they can cash them in later for, for needed blessing. Kind of like going to the carnival or to a, a game room and you put money in and play those games and get those little tickets and, and you go over and, and get your prize. Some strive to follow Christ because they believe in, in so doing that they can make the world a better place. And others strive to live a godly life so they can fit in with their group of Christian friends. Now, they know Christians don't do certain things. Christians should not steal, take the Lord's name in vain, uh, uh, lie or, or cheat. So they try not to do those things, or maybe at least not in front of their Christian friends. Before becoming Christians, most people, I know I was in my life, and if you look completely at your life, you'll see too, that before we became Christians, we were focused on ourself or what was important to oneself. Our society is filled with all kinds of programs, all kinds of books and experts who promise to help us to find or improve ourselves. Governments, movie stars, scientists, authors, and every kind of expert out there to show us how to be more healthy, more beautiful, more financially secure, more successful, better parents, better athletes, better than our neighbors, better for the environment. It's all out there. And the focus is always on how to maximize our lives here on earth. How do we make the 70 or 90 years that we live here the very best. Now, of course, the idea underlying all of this self-motivated improvement is the belief. This life is all there is, so you better make the most of it. Christians, however, 
are not motivated by self, not centered on self, not focused on the world exclusively. John's Gospel, chapter number 15, verse 19, Jesus said, If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. As Christians, we live in this material world and are subject to all the same challenges, opportunities, and experiences common to everyone except our motivation is spiritual. Our goals are spiritual, and our values are biblical. Our focus is life after this life on earth is over. Our object of worship is not self or the things that are important to self, but rather Jesus Christ. And He's the one who offers eternal life. So the difference in life center, the difference in life objectives, is what creates this unique Christian lifestyle. Now, it's a lifestyle not marked out by a change of clothing. There's no uniform, there's no special dress needed to be a Christian. But what a Christian puts on is Christ himself. Paul put it this way to the church in Galatia. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 26, For you were all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus, and all who have been united with Christ in baptism have put on the character of Christ, like putting on new clothes. So the Christian lifestyle is the character of Christ being developed, being perfected in the character of the Christian on a daily basis. On a daily basis. Not just Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, or just your quiet time and prayer time, but on a daily basis. And we as Christians are subject to all the same experiences as non-Christians, but the difference is the Christian views and reacts to these as Christ would, not simply as a human being would. So for this reason, all the elements of life then are seen through the vision of Christ, through the eyes of Christ, not that of man. We think about the environment. Listen, it's not just for saving, but it's for managing and witnessing God's creative power. Money and power are not for hoarding and for fulfilling self-interest, but for the benefit of those in need. Conflict are, it, it, conflicts are not resolved through power. Through the Christian, through the, the vision of Christ, through the eyes of Christ, conflict is, is not resolved through power, but through prayer and forgiveness. Stress and worry are replaced with concern and focused prayer. Poverty and illness are not a, a, a simply a curse to be avoided, but an opportunity to serve and generosity. Trials and obstacles are, are not simply to be overcome, but our God's way of testing our faith and creating patience and hope in us. Even failure and sinfulness are, are not causes for criticism and shame, but the opportunity to know God's love and to know God's forgiveness. That's just a few attitudes, but these attitudes, these goals, this motivation created creates a daily lifestyle that is much different than those who have not believed and devoted their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. You may not be able to identify who is the Christian simply by the way he or she dresses. Not even with the Christian t-shirts. You may not be able to identify a Christian by what they're wearing, but when you observe the Christian who is motivated by the Holy Spirit, who is filled with the Holy Spirit, then you will see Christ himself living and acting in that person's life. There is a change, a change of lifestyle when one becomes a Christian. He comes into a new circle of influence. He, he has a, a new and different motivation. Now, also, if you're going to live, want to live this, this uh, Christian life filled by the Holy Spirit, then you've got to realize that real Christianity is, is being filled by the Holy Spirit to follow Jesus Christ every day. Being filled or motivated by the Holy Spirit is the source of our strength, and it provides all the rewards of joy and peace and life eternal. 
Listen, beloved, it, we haven't entered this building yet or entering worship in your, in, in your, in your living room, but, but listen, entering this building where the church gathers together, when Christians come together uh, to share a common strength, to share a common joy, a common peace, and a common hope for eternal life, if a person isn't living by the motivation of the Holy Spirit during the week, coming into this building, no matter how many times, won't do much good. Now, you might be inspired. You might be challenged. And prayerfully and hopefully the Holy Spirit will speak to you and you'll pray and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. But for the one who is truly following the Lord, being motivated by the feeling of the Holy Spirit, Church worship, church services, church gatherings are a great joy and a blessing. Not a burden, not something to check off of a list, not something that you have to do, not even something that you need to do, but it should be something that you want to do. So the Holy Spirit motivates us to worship. Remember that what we do and how we do it impacts more than just us. We live in, in, in a, a pretty selfish time, constantly. On the social media, on the television, on the internet, conversations that we have, you hear people say, I have to take care of my needs. I, I, I need to do what's best for me. Those statements assume that we actually know what's best for us. But I, I don't think we really do. Selfishness not only grieves the Holy Spirit, but it also robs us of life and of blessing. The Holy Spirit motivates us to take a stand for Jesus. Now, Christians are taking a stand all across this nation. Some on the streets, some in the pulpits, and some on social media. Christians need to speak on behalf of the Lord Jesus Christ. And here's one thing I noticed. On Facebook, when, when you see a a post, and it's got a lot of words. You're tempted to swipe that. Because I've stopped and I've read those. And we have individuals in our congregation who are basically preaching on social media. And people need to read it and they need to listen. They're taking a stand in, in, a, in a manner that, will, that can affect thousands of people. The Holy Spirit motivates us to take a stand for Jesus. And the Holy Spirit motivates us to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Start by sharing the good news on your social media. Before you log on to, to YouTube, go to your Facebook and, and send out that announcement from our Facebook. Send it out to all your friends. Every, every week, share it across and you'll see how many people it touches. Start in your home, start in your workplace, your neighborhoods, your school students. Start in the marketplace with family and friends and neighbors and, yes, even the stranger. Perhaps someone waiting in a waiting room, perhaps someone waiting in line, perhaps someone in an elevator. Strike up a conversation. They're not going to get off that quickly. But we can share, the, share Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit motivates us when the Holy Spirit takes up more of us. And He has monopoly of us than we are filled. The Holy Spirit motivates us to walk closer and deeper with the Lord. Put on the character of Christ and remember who you belong to. Listen, Christian, you were bought with the blood of Jesus Christ. He took your place and my place on that cross. It was His blood that was shed, His death. We were bought with a price. And this morning, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, He died for you, and He's willing to pay for your sin debt. He's willing to forgive you of your sin this morning. There, wherever you are, just pray and ask Him to forgive you. When we become a follower of Christ, the Holy Spirit has to be our motivator. He has to be the one that moves us. And now that we are a part of, we, we have the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is in us. We, we, we now belong to a royal family. We are children of the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And our, and our privilege and our honor should change the way we approach the life that we live in. This relationship 
should impact everything because it's so precious to us. Listen, serving the Lord is not about keeping God from getting mad at us. It's not even about doing what we should do. But Paul urges us to serve the Lord and to follow His commands because we are so loved by God. And we want to demonstrate to Him how much we love Him. How much we love Him when we are motivated by the Holy Spirit and we follow His leading. It pleases God, and He walks closer to us. You can't tell a Christian that's be, that is filled by the Holy Spirit by the clothes that they have on. But listen, I'm, I'm closing. You can tell by the way they live their lives. You can tell by the way they treat other people. You can tell by their actions and their reactions. You can tell by the way they treat, even treat a child. A person who is filled by the Holy Spirit sees the world through the character of Jesus Christ, through the vision of Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but these last three weeks I have prayed and prayed that God would take up more space in my life that the Holy Spirit would take more of me and I would give more of myself to Him, that I would be filled. This morning, would you join me in praying that we might be filled by the Holy Spirit? Now, the words don't matter as much as the attitude of the heart and the reason and the purpose. So would you pray this prayer with me right now? Our gracious Heavenly Father God, I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit so that I might live, Father, a life that is pleasing to you. Father God, I want my life to bring honor and glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. I empty myself. I empty myself and I see that I need to be filled. And I am empty. And I need, Father God, the filling of your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, for forgiving my sins through the death of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for sending the Holy Spirit to indwell in me. Now, Father God, I pray that you will empower me, that I can be the salt and the light of Jesus Christ in this world around me. And I pray... Father God, this in faith believing that you have heard my prayer and you have promised. Father God, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Holy Spirit, I love you. I thank you. I thank you. And I thank you. In the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, all God's people said, Amen, amen, amen. God bless you all. Now be filled with the Holy Spirit. Make a difference in, in the lives of people around you. God bless you all as we continue our worship. When, when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair when the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore and the road is called up yonder i'll be there yes when the road is called up yonder 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 i'll be there on the bright and cloudless morning when the dead in Christ shall rise and the glory of His resurrection share. When the chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the skies and the road is called up yonder, I'll be there. Yes, when the road is called up yonder, when the road is called up yonder, when the road is called up yonder, Yonder I'll be there Let 
us labor for the master from the dawn till setting sun. Let us talk of his wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, and the road is called up yonder, I'll be there. Yes, when the road is called up yonder, when the road is called up yonder, when the road is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the road is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the road is caught up yonder, when the road is caught up yonder, when the road is caught up yonder. Hey Nathan, will you be there? Absolutely. When the road is caught up yonder, I'll be there. All right, church, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for this day and everything you've done. We thank you for all the many blessings you've given to us, God, this week. We know that you have given us so much that we don't deserve. And you've also spared us from things which we do deserve. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. God, we love the fact that even though we can't uh, be together physically, we are always together through the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that connects our hearts. It's the Holy Spirit that connects our souls. So we thank you, God, for the Holy Spirit in this rough time. He is there. He was given to us at Pentecost. But ever since then, he has been here. So we thank you, God. We praise you for that spirit. God, we pray that as we continue to go through what the world is going through, God, now it's not just a virus, but it's, it's uh, some violence. God, we, we pray for those who are in harm's way. We pray for those, uh, those folks who, who need an uplifting, folks who need a healing, folks who need assurance, and folks who need comfort. And all of these things only come from you. As Christians, God, we know that your Holy Spirit is the great comforter. The Holy Spirit is the encourager. So we pray, God, for encouragement, for comfort on those who need their, 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 uh, their mental status change, who need their spiritual status change. God, we also pray for those whose physical status needs to be changed as well. God, we know that there are ailments, there are diseases, there are sickness. But through it all, we look to you. And we pray for those who don't know you, that we might be the light in the darkness, that we might be the warmth in the cold, spreading the word, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because when all hope seems lost to someone who doesn't believe, once they believe, all hope is restored. And we believe this to be true. God, we pray for those who have relationship issues with all the tension and the turmoil and the heartache that's going on. We know it's putting strain on relationships. God, we pray that you mend those relationships because it's only the devil it's only the devil who inspires division, but it is you who inspires reconciliation. It is you who brings people together. In this world, it seems so divided, families being ripped apart by feelings and attitudes. God, we know that the calmness can come from you. When the storms of life are raging, just like when the disciples were on a, a real storm, you calmed it. You calmed the oceans. You calmed the waves. You told the clouds to go away. And we know you can do the same for those whose relationships are in a storm. God, we don't know why you decided to put us on the world, on the earth at this point in time. But we know. We know that you have given us a mission. And we know what we need to do. No matter if it's good times or bad times, it's our responsibility to spread your word. And so on behalf of others, we ask these things. And most importantly, may we be emboldened to go and spread the word to others, to spread the gospel. So keep us safe, God. We know your hand will keep us safe as we go through these treacherous times. We love you. We praise you. Our hope, our faith, our eyes are on you. It's in your son's name, Jesus Christ, that we ask all these things. Amen. Again, thank you for joining us this morning for worship and praise to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And don't forget the other opportunities that you have this week to join us for, for worship and Bible study. On Tuesday mornings at 1130, we have Z Kids Facebook Live. Wednesday nights at 645 is our prayer gathering. And uh, we thank you for joining us and bring your prayer requests and your praises. And then Thursdays, we have uh, Zoom in with Z Kids at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. 
uh, and we would love for everyone to take part of, in all of that. And I know we're all still wondering, when are we going to have in-person worship? Very soon. I don't have an exact date yet, but all the plans and preparations are being made, and we're trying to include uh, those on our digital platform that will be at home. Uh, so hopefully and prayerfully, just pray really, really hard uh, that it'll all work out because we are really, really close. And I'm looking forward to seeing you all, and I know that you're looking forward to seeing each other. So may the Lord bless you and keep you, and may He cause His face to shine upon you as He fills you with the Holy Spirit. In His name, amen. God bless you.